Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to your early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum here with some words of wisdom for us to think about, ponder, discuss, etc. So we'll give it a minute here as everyone pops on and then I'll put a little framework around this card for today and uh, we'll go from there. So let us start with the breath and I think we need a little tapping. So in through the nose out through the mouth. Good morning, Cindy, waving back. Good morning, Carolyn, welcome. <sighs> Centering and grounding today. Feels like that's really important. <sighs> so I want you to imagine your crown chakra spinning open. Good morning, Chrissy, glad you're here. Breathing in, healing golden light with every inhale. Exhaling that through your entire body. Out your feet like little trap doors flying open in the bottom of your feet. Connecting you to Mother Earth more deeply with every exhale. Good morning, Janine. Welcome. Inhale. Exhale. Good morning, Joe Neal. Glad you're here. So there's seven of you on here. I'm sure I missed saying hi to a few of you as names flew past. Good morning, Abigail. Welcome. We have some interesting things to talk about today. In through the nose, out through the mouth. So as you continue to breathe and tap and whatever you need for you right now, I'm just going to frame up today's card a little bit because I think it will help um, us ground even further into this message and this work. So last night I wasn't sleeping well. My phone kept going off. I'm on a, a prayer chain and there were lots of people putting things in and it just kept buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Finally, I turned it off. Turned the whole thing off. I typically don't do that because I have family members in various stages. Fabulous, fabulous, congratulations. So that's two of you yesterday that got good news on the cancer front. Yay, yay. Fabulous. So when we heed the messages, I think it helps our bodies heal. So we're getting messages in today's reading that I think are very important. So going back, wasn't sleeping well, turned the phone off, slept better, but it was a processing sleep. You know when your brain is working on stuff while you're sleeping and so you're not, you don't wake up real rested. That's today. Good morning, Gwen. Glad you're here. Welcome. Good morning, Beth. Hello, hello. And we're up to my magic number eight. Gotta love it. So I was reading the things I typically read after we do the early morning intuitive guidance because I have my coffee group and then we're allegedly taking off for Sun Prairie to do some work on the house we're flipping. Um, all these things on my mind still have entire issues, needing to address how to smoothly transition my dad from here to there. Good morning, Barb. Welcome, welcome. So lots of things on my mind. Got some news yesterday that wasn't overly welcome news. Was expected, I think, but not overly welcome. And can't share that yet, but will when when those who need to know have already been told, then we'll move on to letting other people know. Um, so just, I'm going to call it the perfect storm of stuff and hearing Bobby's voice in my ear saying at the center of life storms, I stand serene. So yesterday was yoga day. Thank God it was yoga day. That helped center and ground me as I worked my way through all of this churning, <laughs> chaos and churning. So, um... This morning, again, I was reading through my emails prior to talking to all of you instead of after, which is typical, because I wouldn't have time after. And all manner of interesting things popped up. A uh, uh, fundraising thing where it's talking about the Taliban and recent rules that they've passed that women cannot speak in public. Women cannot speak outside of their own homes. Good morning, Suzanne. Glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. 
Think about that. Living in a place where women are not allowed to speak, their voices cannot be heard outside of their homes. And as the article went on, it's, it's talking to Afghani men and them now beginning to say, maybe we should have stood up for our women. Because now the Taliban is turning their view toward the Afghani men and saying, no more wearing Western blue jeans, no more cutting your hair, you need to let your hair grow. You haven't been um, at services in quite some time keeping track of. And, and one man said, we know what's required. We don't need them policing it. Good morning, Deb. Glad you're here. However, circumstances have been created that that is happening. And early on, would they have said, this is possible, this could happen? No, no. Oftentimes, we don't see things until they're literally unfolding in front of our eyes. And we don't want to believe that um, certain things are possible. So this, because I think many people are in the place of, what do we do now? What do we do now? Um, and reacting is not a great approach. Making decisions, well thought through, well felt through, aligned decisions is useful. Good morning, Marilyn. Glad you are here. Welcome. So this card today, I think, is a beautiful framework for how do we proceed? How do we move forward? Many of us are posting things to help hopefully provide guidance and the big container in which forward progress and change will occur over time, over time. This is, I think, a lovely description of what could we could choose to do. So, Earth Warriors deck, Alana Fairchild, and one of the things, Joniel and I did our first rounds of um, this new thing, which we don't even know what we're calling it, I don't think. Good morning, Brenda. Glad you're here. Welcome. We're up to 14 people. This is fabulous. So what this tells me, folks, is you're all meant to hear this message. Good morning, Linda. 16 people. We're here. It doesn't matter that for this particular round, I'm the messenger. I'm merely the conduit. This card picked us. I didn't pick it, okay? And so this message, which when I first started reading, you know, like, what, what? And there's some ironies that are not lost on me that I just think are so interesting. So it is Clan of the Wolf Heart. Clan of the Wolf Heart. And if you follow wolves, what happened, legislation about wolves, etc., there is a huge fight going on right now to save many of the wolves that are in the West because there's like a wholesale slaughter going on of the wolves. To me, that kind of represents some of the other wholesale slaughters that may follow. We'll see. We'll see how things unfold. But again, listen to the card because it's so useful. And I think I posted it, but I'm not sure. I know I sent it to my friend Kayleen because um, she loves music and song and it's one of her healing things. Um, uh, Abigail Bengston has a, a song out. Good morning, Catherine. Glad you're here. I'll try to go back and post it if I, if I can find it again. Um, but... They, she and her husband are the ones who did that amazing song during COVID that really helped bring people together and cope. And so many people wrote about the point in the song where she's asking, are you okay? Are you okay? People said, I just sobbed, just sobbed. Good morning, Gwen, glad you're here. This new song is basically about... Um, the power of us, the power of people. And again, I note that I heard that song yesterday. And today, the subtitle of the Clan of the Wolfheart is We 
are the ones we've been waiting for. Take a breath. We are the ones we've been waiting for. So rather than lamenting, who's going to fix this? Who's going to help us? Who I did post the song. Thank you, Barb. I appreciate it. Please listen to it. Please listen. It is raw. It is, it is Abigail. That is her. Um, hear the words. Hear these words. And there's a part in here where it's, it's sharing a ton of information. <laughs> Thank you. A ton of information about wolves and culture's beliefs about wolves. Good morning, Trudy. And I want you to hear that with your intuitive ear, not just your physical ears, your intuitive ear. How is this relevant for now, right? We are the ones we've been waiting for. You belong with the wolf-hearted. This is a soul collective with boundaries beyond bloodlines and geography. I love that. It is not about bloodlines and geography. It is based on soul connection to love's wisdom. And I was reading Richard Rohr's message for today, Father Richard Rohr. If you don't get Center for um, Action and Contemplation, and he's talking about all this same stuff, there's a reason all the same messages start flooding through at once. Let's see, it is based on soul connection to love's wisdom and higher truths of the divine. The collective is united through wolf medicine and the heart. Put your hand on your heart, please. Take a nice deep breath in. And out. We can do hard things. These qualities of the divine feminine unite, unify, allowing for a palpable experience of oneness that brings power to our collective wisdom and purpose. No more shunning the divine feminine. It is rising. It is rising. And it may be rising in response to some of the things that are happening, the things that feel further away from divine feminine over and over again. That's okay. That's okay. If that's what it takes for us to get attached, connected, solid, grounded in divine feminine, We'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We can do this. In a reading, reach out for help from others while you honor and respect your individuality and your unique life journey. Balance social time with taking care of yourself. So we are members of a collective, but we're also individuals. We have fiercely defended that individual stance and we've lost a lot of touch with that collective, that community. We need to be feeding that right now. Balance social time with taking care of yourself, including your need for solitude, so you can hear your inner truths and renew yourself. I love this next part. Breathe. Let's listen to this part. Anger can be a sign from the soul, a sacred gift that asks you to deal with a situation, to bring about something different and more empowering. Use your anger as a sacred gift with compassion and clear purpose. So I'll give you an example from yesterday. My sister was in the grocery store and someone yelled at her because she was in the way. Now, in the divine masculine run amok, what would she have done? Flared back, struck out, yelled back. Divine feminine would suggest that you calmly and directly address it. I'm sorry I'm in your way. I will move. I would appreciate if you wouldn't speak to me like that. And then move forward. I believe kindly and lovingly we need to be calling people out on their bad behavior. To just ignore it and walk away doesn't call it out, doesn't bring it into the light where it can be addressed. When you speak to it in that way, it hopefully shines the light on just how extreme and inappropriate that is. They still get what they're looking for, which is the ability to go through, but they're also being called out on their approach. 
kindly and lovingly. The, the um, Sharon Ellison stuff, we need to do this with love in our heart. We need to do this with love in our heart. And I know there are going to be those of you who say, I'm not saying anything to anybody. God knows who's carrying a gun, right? Yes, true. Good morning, Carrie. Glad you were here. Um, true. But somewhere in here, we need to make a few inroads with regard to calling out unacceptable behavior kindly and lovingly and then moving on. So let's keep going here. This particular, written by um, Alana Fairchild, and I think, I think she channels her stuff. I just have a gut feeling she channels her stuff. Good morning, Cheryl. Glad you're here uses the word fight. I'm not, I, I believe that our connotations around the word fight have gotten too physical and too three-dimensional. We're not viewing that word in a 5D way. But as I continue reading, I think more of that will become, but she does use the word fight here. Fight with the whole of your heart when you need to safeguard what truly matters. To me, that fight could be, again, divine feminine. I will move. I'm sorry I'm in your way. I didn't realize it. I'd appreciate it if you'd speak to me in a nicer tone. Step aside, move on, okay? Be open to a greater guiding wisdom so that you know how to be merciful and when to cut something off completely. Believe in the power of your inner voice and do not silence yourself. Spiritual guidance. And here's the part where it's talking about all different um, ethnic groups, etc. and how they view the wolf. In Serbian mythology, the wolf is fearless and protective against malfeasant witchcraft. And I'm going to say malfeasance of all kinds. Malfeasance of all kinds. In the belief systems of nomadic Turkic peoples, the ancient Romans, and this is going to be a heck of a word, Zoroastrianism, a she-wolf protects and nourishes the abandoned ancestors who would otherwise have faced certain death, thus ensuring future generations will thrive. Chechen folklore claims that Chechnya was born of a she-wolf. In Norse mythology, wolves are connected to the gods as faithful companions to Odin. In the myths of Turkey, Mongolia, Japan, and various Native American peoples, including Navajo, Tewa, and Pawnee, the wolf is attributed supernatural ability and medicinal power. The Alaskan Danina recognized wolves as shape-shifting brothers. The idea of shape-shifting between human and wolf form is also present in Slavic cultures of Eastern Europe and Russia. My sister actually has a painting by someone where it's an, an um, indigenous person on a rock looking over into the water and a wolf image looking back. It's pretty cool. In the ancient Indian text of the Rig Veda, Veda the divine created wolves to ensure that people continued on their journey even when they needed to be pushed through fear to do so. How many of us feel that place right now? There's fear, there's anger, but the need to continue, to move through. Reviled in some cultural traditions, again, the slaughter that's happening out west in America right now. Revered in many others, the wolf has a deep connection with humans, and in many cultures is a complex icon of protection and direction. And again, that divine feminine. So doesn't it kind of make sense that right now there's a slaughter? The wolf heart, through the wolf heart, we are kindred souls connecting with a shared bond, that of our humanity. Our external identities shift and change with circumstances, and our souls will travel through different ethnicities and cultures over many lifetimes. Still, our soul collective is universally connected through the heart of the wolf way. Wolf wisdom is the backbone of the emerging new world culture. Good morning, Molly. Glad you are here. Welcome. What began as an alternative culture is now growing stronger becoming more pervasive in consciousness and influence. So what things look like on the surface isn't necessarily 
what's going on underneath the surface. We kind of get that, right? At this point, we get that. With wisdom, the culture of the alternative can function as a saving grace, guiding humanity in, into a healthier way of being. And one of the things that I read this morning already was talking about that, that what seemed like an impossibility, a frivolous outlying now feels like the path to salvation. Interesting, interesting stuff. Let's see. Wolf personalities are strong, and we are not afraid to voice our individual truths. So we may get our buttons pushed by each other at times. Ding, 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 ding. So when Joniel and I were doing our first couple of um, videos to be launched, hopefully one at the end of the week. We'll see how, how um, Abel Morgan is to, to get, have time to do that for us this week. But hopefully at the end of the week you'll see that this is this is what where we're at. There are going to be times where our buttons get pushed by someone who believes differently than we do. Again, we're she and I are coming from the premise that even if a label that someone has tacked on us makes us seem like we're coming from different totally different points of view, there's more commonality than there is difference. That's part of what we want to demonstrate. Okay, let's see. Our buttons may get pushed by each other at times. However, when we remember that we are on the same team, fighting for the same great purpose, we can forgive and encourage each other and continue to harness the power of what we can accomplish together effectively. This next couple of lines are really powerful. Listen to them because I think it so fits for right here, right now. Unconscious wolf energy wants to devour. Yet when held with compassionate wisdom, wolf becomes our guide, bestowing endurance, intuitive wisdom, and community. So again, we need to be conscious about what we're thinking, what we're saying, what we're doing. Edit ourselves. So um, Joniel called me out on one little phrase that I had used in yesterday's Yemig, and Good morning, Lisa. Glad you were here. Welcome. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to what is coming out of our mouths. What is coming out of our mouths? Wolf becomes our guide, bestowing endurance, intuitive wisdom, and community. Wolves mate for life, and the wolf-hearted have an organized social structure balanced between group endeavor and individualism. At this point, we are lopsided. We are out of balance. We are way into this rugged individualism at the expense of the group. We need more balance. We need more balance. Yes, it was loving. It was loving, absolutely. Wolves are free-spirited, yet the social order of the pack provides support, loyalty, and thriving. Wolf wisdom teaches us how to balance solitude and socialization. We all need both in differing amounts. Some of us need more solitude than others. Loyalty and the freedom of thought essential for creative evolution. We cannot have, we tell you what to do and you must do it. That is not a fertile ground for evolution. We need the space held for creativity. And I'm going to go back to my quote from that dropped into my brain. Uh, that was July 21st. Stoke the furnace of your creativity, for then all the perceived obstacles just become the building blocks of your dream. Let's change the your to our dream, our collective dream for how things can be. Wolf teaches that tradition and innovation are both needed for the well-being of self and community. Wolf teaches us to share ourselves without losing ourselves. How many women struggle with that? They give, 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 give until they have totally lost themselves. They have no idea who they are. I can't tell you the number of women over the years that I've worked with who are early in a divorce and they have no idea because they've totally handed over their beingness to their partner they have no idea what they like, what they want, how they're going to survive, nothing. 
or the partner dies and they have totally relied on that person forever. I remember my grandmother after my grandfather died. She had rarely driven. So now she's trying to drive 45 miles an hour on the highway and people are flipping her off and, you know, making it dangerous and whatever. She didn't know how to balance a checkbook, nothing, because he had handled all of that stuff. We need to step into our own power here. We need to know what's going on. We need to not capitulate that wisdom, okay? Wolf teaches us to share ourselves without losing ourselves. The howl of the wolf is primal and powerful. It is used to locate pack members or define the boundaries of their territory to outsiders. And she talks about territory in a moment here in a really interesting way. The howling wolf is medicine for standing your ground and defending that which is rightfully within your guardianship. If this strikes a note with you now, be aware that using your voice and your energy to set boundaries and claim your space can be accomplished without encroaching on the rightful terrain of another. Here's the important part. Territory is not physical. What have we done territory-wise? There we go. And that's three times in a row where I haven't lost you guys when I did that. Yay! Um... Territory is not physical. We put up fences. We block things off. We put up wire. We... That's not how indigenous people managed things. There, there was not, they had territory. They had space. But they typically didn't put up fences and barricades and all that stuff. And look at what we've done. Here's an, I'm going off on an aside, but I will reroute. I'll come back. Look what we've done with water. We dam it up. We direct it where we want it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> territory is not physical. This is the way of the ego. Territory is spiritual. Claiming it means reclaiming and sustaining the right state of mind and the expanded consciousness of opening your heart to spirit that allows you to determine the quality, awareness, and stability of your energy field. We can coexist. We can coexist. We can be next door to men and women and straight and gay and brown and black and white and red and all the variety. We need to stop the barrier thing. It is just, this is for yourself and for all beings that seek refuge within your light. Claiming spiritual territory is always about securing protection and surrendering the ego, not bolstering individual identity at the expense of others. So who do you see who are the team players and manage that eloquently? They're still getting their own needs met, but they're team players. And sometimes they forego what might be in their own highest and best good in order to allow what the others need. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This this is amazing. Amazing stuff. Wolf medicine is the awakening of the pathfinder, the way shower, the teacher. Wolf can learn new ways and teach them to others. Part of your soul purpose is to guide and inspire others through what you learn to master your life. So what I'm working to master in my life right now is that more balanced way of being. Using the anger to realize that basically when I'm feeling angry, it's something is stepping on my toes. Something is encroaching on my sovereignty and that needs to be addressed. That doesn't get addressed by shooting people, by calling people names, by yelling at people. No, it's about talking about it like this, like this. We are the people who can do what's needed. Silence. We are the people who can do what's needed. We can fight the status quo and elicit soul passion and on the ground action to take us from merely salvaging what we can into, I love this phrase, you ready? Alchemical echo salvation and the spiritual rebirthing of our world. 
So that's what's happening right now. This is all labor pains. This is all labor pains. Is it messy? Yes. Is it fun? No. <laughs> is it a much larger thing than what we're witnessing on the 3D level? Yes, yes, yes. Let us recognize the capacity for empowered spiritual intelligence within humanity. Spirit has blessed the wolf-hearted with intelligence, individuality, social and community values, commitment, and the ability to outwit the ego-driven enemies of the human soul. We are blessed with protecting and defending what matters to the heart and adapting to change successfully. And I think a huge piece of that is realizing that even when people are behaving really poorly, it's probably being driven by the ego stuff and fear and whatever else. And allowing some grace there. Are there people who are engaging in pure evil? Possibly. But are there a whole lot of people who are misguided? Definitely. So when we can offer grace as we're doing our work, that's awesome. We are blessed with protecting and defending what matters to the heart and adapting to change successfully. May we realize our abilities, tap into the resources we have, and use them fruitfully. May we have joyful courage and confidence in who we are and what we are here to do. What we are here to do. So rather than derailing into what's all going wrong and ain't a terrible, horrible, awful, let's focus calmly and quietly on what am I here to do? What am I being called to do? What am I being called to contribute to? What am I being called to address? Where do I go from here? And if you're not sure, get still, get quiet, spend some time in nature, just be, and you'll know. Have an awesome day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember you're capable of far more. Bye-bye.